Now that we've got both components of MySQL installed, both server and client components, we want to go ahead and secure the default accounts. So we're going to spend this section illustrating the accounts that are exposed and teaching you how to secure those accounts from malicious connections. Let's open a shell and we'll open our notes file which should be located in our home directory. Well, lsltr star.txt and we'll launch gedit to modify the text file. We'll just send it to the background for simplicity. So after confirming all the MD5 sums, installing the server and the client, the next step is to basically secure the server. In its default state, MySQL is considered to be insecure because it permits connectivity from the local host from both root as well as anonymous connections, and we'll show you that shortly. So any user who has local access to the system, whether via SSH or some sort of other redirector such as Zynet-D, can simply log in with and make changes, create databases, and wreak havoc on your DBMS system. So the first step, as is usually the case with any DBMS system, is to secure the system. Other DBMSs take a different approach, which is a less restrictive approach, which forces the administrator to grant access in order to, to specific accounts in order for those accounts to gain access to the DBMS. But MySQL permits root as well as anonymous access. Perhaps this model or strategy will change, but that is the case as of version or still with version 5 of the product. So next step is to secure default accounts. Now there are two accounts, so we'll just simply note that there are two default accounts whenever you install MySQL. They include an account for root and in fact there are actually two entries in the table for each of the accounts that we're going to describe one which resembles or looks just like root as mentioned here and another which is root at the local host and the other account is for anonymous which doesn't actually say anonymous but it permits anonymous access so these are the two accounts that we need to secure now by default there's some things you should know about the anonymous account since the root account is pretty self-explanatory. It permits access to the full DBMS. The anonymous account permits access only to the test database. So the test database is the only database that an anonymous user can interact with. How do you connect as an anonymous user? By not one disabling the anonymous account and by not specifying a username to connect or a legitimate username to connect as to the MySQL instance. We'll show you that shortly anyway. But just note that the only database that the anonymous user has access to by default is the test database which really cons contains nothing of importance and serves really as a model or as a database for users to interact with to learn how the MySQL terminal software works as well as to use other front ends to connect to MySQL so it's just an entry into MySQL the root account however permits full access as mentioned to all databases and by default we should also note there are three default databases after you've installed MySQL version 5 and we'll show those momentarily. MySQL is one of them which is used for management and others a test and you'll see the third momentarily. So here's some default information. Two default accounts, root, anonymous, and we need to secure these accounts. Both accounts are in an insecure or unsecure state which simply means that Anyone can connect from the local host to the MySQL instance without prompting or specifying a password or being prompted for a password. Let's illustrate that. Let's confirm that MySQL is running by executing a netstat ntlp. You'll see that port 3306 is currently bound to and it, in all likelihood it's bound to by the MySQL program. Additionally, let's attempt to connect to the MySQL instance from the shell will expand the size of this window and then launch the MySQL client which is a member of the MySQL client package. In fact if you do a which it's always a good idea to know where binaries are located on the system. If we execute which MySQL it tells us that the binary is located in user bin 
And if we follow up that with an RPM query file of user bin MySQL, you'll see that the MySQL program belongs to the MySQL client standard version 5.018 which was packaged for SUSE Enterprise Linux version 9 but which works perfectly fine on version 10. This is the current production release. So it's a good idea to know which packages own which binaries on your system in the event that you do upgrade or install multiple versions of programs on your system which happens to be one of the beauties of any Nix based system and that is the fact that you can install multiple versions of the program without risking either version of the program or risking any conflicts whereas typically in a Windows environment it becomes problematic you usually are forced to upgrade or to not so having said all of that let's clear screen and let's attempt to connect to the local MySQL instance in order to do so you simply execute MySQL when you do so notice that it takes us in we're currently in this special mode called terminal monitor or monitor mode MySQL always welcomes you when you connect by simply saying welcome to MySQL monitor and it says commands should end with a semicolon or a backslash G, which is the escape sequence. And this is a good point, and we should discuss it briefly. Whenever you execute a command within monitor mode, terminate the command with a semicolon. So that's a note that we should make note of. So note, terminate, and we'll specify all in caps, although there are some exceptions such as use when using a database. But it's a good idea to terminate all commands with a semicolon to instruct the monitor program to execute the command that you have fed it. So when we enter a command such as show databases or show tables, we should follow up that command with a semicolon. In addition, the connection ID is revealed. We are connected using ID number three to the version of the server. So you can always tell the version of MySQL that is currently in use or the version that you have successfully connected to because the monitor program, regardless of version, even as far back as the 3.x series, will return the version information. In this case, it's 5018 standard. You can get help by simply typing help or using the escape sequence backslash H. And we'll do so by simply typing help. Help basically returns different commands that you can execute to get further help or to make use of the terminal environment similar to help within a Cisco equipment such as a router or a firewall simply execute help or the help escape sequence and you'll be able to learn about additional commands which we'll be using of course there are some key commands however returned by the default help program one is how to quit the terminal monitor what you notice on the left here is the English way, which is simply to type QUIT, followed by the escape sequence. Either or will allow you to quit. So for example, if we simply type quit and press enter, it exits the terminal monitor mode and returns us to the bash shell. Now we return, we've returned to the shell, we'll need to re-execute MySQL to return to the shell. Similarly, if we followed that quit command with a backslash Q, for example, it has the same effect which is to kick us out of the terminal mode so any of the escape sequences that you see minus the parentheses that they're enclosed within you can execute and it'll perform the same function as the English version or the long version of the command so quit backslash Q and many of them are logical such as print backslash P or simply print and so on so we're back inside the monitor and again help returns a plethora of help options that you can learn about in fact we're we were in the shell let's return to mysql and help returns the options here that you see the question mark similar to cisco devices will return help information to you that you can use but notice we connected using the mysql client but without being prompted for authentication which in itself is a security breach and which leads us into explaining how mysql security works MySQL security is not contingent upon Linux security. That's the first point we want to drive home. So note, MySQL security is not contingent upon Linux slash Unix. And we'll even go as far as saying Windows since MySQL certainly runs on Windows boxes. So it's not contingent upon operating system 
security. So we should probably also add slash OS security, which simply means that similar to other relational database management systems, MySQL maintains its internal list of legitimate users and passwords or simply credentials. So this is all stored internal to MySQL. If you're wondering where this information is stored, it's stored in a database called MySQL which is installed by default with all instances of MySQL. So credential info is stored in default MySQL database. That's important to know. The reason why it's important, one of many of the reasons why it's important is to indicate to you that the MySQL database is a database that you should under no circumstances delete. Otherwise you'll screw up your credentials and will have difficulties re-entering the database. But your data won't be lost. You'll be able to reinstall MySQL and reattach your databases or simply move your databases to another functioning server. Great. Now that we're in the terminal monitor, let's talk about some of the other things we can do within this monitor. We'll return to some of the neat things that you can do, such as including files using out input from various files that we've outputted later on. We want to list the databases that are currently attached to the system. In order to do so, you simply execute a show databases command, followed by the semicolon, which we indicated is the default delimiter or the, the default termination character which indicates to the terminal that you want it to process the command you've just given it. By executing show databases, notice two databases are returned. Information schema which is internal to MySQL and is relatively new to the MySQL DBMS system and the test database that we've mentioned. So there are two databases that are exposed to the anonymous user. Now how do we know that we're connected as an anonymous user? We know primarily because when you connect to a newly installed MySQL instance the only two users that are defined that will permit access by default are anonymous and root. So unless you've at attempted to log in or use the dash u option or indicate it to the MySQL client that you intend to connect to the server as root you will connect to the server as anonymous and anonymous is restricted. Additionally, when you execute a command such as show databases, the only databases that are returned include the information underscore schema as well as the test databases indicating to us that we are in a limited view. For all MySQL instances there is a MySQL database as mentioned and if you don't see it then your chances are you're logged in as some sort of restricted user. Additionally, you should notice that MySQL returns output in a pretty neat way. It always returns a column header unless you elect to skip the column headers, followed by information in that column, one per line. Here is a line which is prefixed with a pipe and is terminated with a pipe and indicates one piece of information which is the name of the first database, followed by a separate line which is also prefixed by a pipe and terminates with a pipe and indicates the second database. You don't need to keep count, we don't need to also echo integers or prefix the database names with integers because at the end of all output whenever you run queries within MySQL terminal monitor is a quick synopsis or summary of what just occurred and how long it took. Usually that means the number of rows returned as well as how long it took MySQL to return those results to you. So two rows were returned and it took two tenths of a second. So in other words, it was returned relatively quickly. And in this case it was actually 0.02 seconds rather than two tenths of a second. Super. So you always get this information. And we'll show you later on how you can omit information such as the headers in the event that you want to export this information into text files for import into other databases or to output information directly into another program or another MySQL instance using pipes for example. Great. But we've yet to secure the users. Well, we of course want to explore the interface before we show you how easy it is to secure the default users. So, we've looked briefly at how to enter the monitor. We can use either backslash Q 
or simply type quit, let's re-enter, to exit the terminal interface, which returns us to the shell. Additionally, when you're inside of the terminal monitor, you can temporarily return to the shell without losing the connection that you have established. Additionally, your connection ID, or as mentioned, your connection ID will always be reflected, but in this case, additionally, the connection ID is 6 instead of 3. Every time you connect to MySQL, a new connection ID is assigned to the user. So there may be times where you want to preserve your connection ID. We'll show you how to exit to the shell to make that a possibility. Super. So next, we secure anonymous as well as root accounts and then move on with administering our MySQL database.